Yo, yo. What's up, everyone? Today is an exciting day because we are going to be finishing this project that we started six days ago. So yesterday, you guys were with me. We put together the V2, or maybe it's like V version B. We had version A, version B, and put together them. And I'm gonna grab them for you because they're just over here. Let me grab them. Oh yeah. There they are. Let me get this out of the way. And then we can give you guys a better view here. So there they are, VA and VB. And yesterday we put this together. This is version B. The day before we put together version A, that's this. It's a little bit tangled right now. And on yesterday's stream, you guys decided, we all decided together, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the stream today. So yesterday on stream, we decided that this is the version we like better. And I'll just, I'll give you a little demo on how they both work here. So let me see if I can get this right here. Uh, there's a good view for that. So when these guys stop jiggling, someone on uh, in the comments called these dingleberries. Love it. Dingleberries, acorns. I don't know, some sort of other inappropriate thing. So this is how this one works. The dingleberries move up and down as you crank the crank and it creates this sine wave. But one problem with the dingleberries is it's actually kind of hard to see the wave motion and yeah. So anyways, that's the dingleberries. It's not bad, but on stream the other day, someone had the idea to, instead of using dingleberries, use this articulating wave structure. And so I decided to mock it up and see how it works. And I think it looks way cooler. So today, today's stream, we're going to be finalizing this design right here. We can get the dingleberries out of the way. And I actually, I have an idea for this that we're going to probably work on later in the stream today because we're almost basically done. So all we have to do here is just assemble the revised version of these articulating waves. And yeah, that's basically it. Everything else is ready to go. So the articulating version, or sorry, the next version of these articulating waves is going to look something like this. And I can pull it up for you on my screen and then we can put it all together. So instead of having just a single articulation, we're going to have a double. So as these move up and down, this is like a four bar linkage and it's going to move up and down as well. We're going to get some nice wavy motion. I made some changes. I fixed some of the problems that I had from yesterday's design. Like for example, right here, when I changed from having the whole gear system here on the crank side to just this gear right directly attached to this crank right here, I realized that I had left this big gear right here and it's not connected to anything. So it's completely redundant. So we fixed that, you know, we took away that gear and just went straight into the bevel gear and I fixed some of the clearance issues. So all the parts printed overnight. Let me grab them and we can put everything together. Actually, first things first though, we need to tie onto the string mount, which is this thing right here. I've already gotten a couple done, so let me grab that and we can, uh, we can get rolling. So how are you guys doing today? How's everyone feeling? we're starting with. So as you can see, I've already tied four of these strings. So we just got to tie 
Five more, and luckily I've actually gotten way better at tying these knots. I'm now very experienced in fishermen's knots. So if anyone wants to go fishing, let me know. So I've actually been using this, this uh, base that I printed as a spool holder, which is pretty nice. So yeah, let's just um, tie some more knots first and then we can finish this piece. So as always, if you guys have any questions while I'm working, feel free to ask them. I, I'm happy to chat about anything you guys want. It could be engineering, it could be art, it could be neither. It could be anything you want. Thanks Lollisbot, I appreciate it. Lollisbot is the, um, they provided me with a printer and it's, it's a workhorse, it's been, been getting stuff done which has been really helpful especially because some of my other printers are down right now so that came in very clutch so yeah this fisherman's knot that was probably the smoothest one I've ever done look at that the pressure of the stream is not getting to my head Feeling the vibes here. So for this, I decided to uh, to go with just pink for this version, just pink string. So this uh, fishing line that I bought, I didn't realize that it was actually blue and pink or magenta or whatever. So I gotta cut away the blue parts and I'll save it for something else. I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to this stuff. I really struggle to throw things away when I believe that I can use it in the future. So yeah, uh, don't worry, not, none of it's going to waste. You put the string through, you wrap it around the main string a couple times. And that goes through the OG loop here. Like that, and then it goes back through that loop. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky when I don't give myself enough slack. So I've been using these tweezers to pull it through. And Stream pressure is now getting to me. Oh no. All right, we got it. Okay, three to go. This is just the way it is. A lot of these things that I build, it's like, you know, very repetitive when it comes to building. But as I mentioned in the past, it is totally worth it to get these outcomes. These like re repeating outcomes are just so cool. And that is just part of what art is. Let's go for speed on this one. Through that loop. Tweezers. And through, yes, first try. Two to go.
So as I mentioned before, this is what we're working on right here. This is what we're working on right here. So maybe I'll just, I'll keep this in the main screen right now. And uh, maybe I can do this. I'll just bring that here in the corner. That's what we're working on. Hell yeah. And right now we're just, I'm just gonna finish tying the strings to this and then we can get moving on disassembly and reassembly of the final version. So this is all kind of the prototyping process of the way that I create my download files. So these are files that anyone can, uh, can 3D print themselves. They just go grab the files from my website or from my mini factory or from Cults 3D. Download the files on your own printer and you can assemble them. I have videos that explain how to assemble this stuff as well. So one thing that I, I really think about when I'm designing is how can I make it easy or at least manageable for someone to assemble without the additional, any additional tools or equipment. So all the parts, except for in this sculpture, the three, the string is all 3D printed. So all you really need is your printer and some filament. And in this case, a fishing line, which you can get from like anywhere. doesn't matter what fishing line you're using. And you can put this sculpture together. And that's actually, it's pretty fun. Like it's, uh, you know, you can create a, it's like a really awesome opportunity to create a gift for someone or just to explore what you can do with 3D printing yourself. I really like things that move. I like art that moves and that's kind of my focus is I really like to create models of mechanical things that move. And so, yeah, that's, that's what this sculpture is. So a lot of people ask like, well, like what does it do? It's, it's art, it's a sculpture. Does, uh, like what does a painting do? Other than, you know, it makes you think, it's something you can collect. You know, but yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting, um, I don't know, interesting thought when people ask, like, what is art, you know? And I, I'd love to hear your opinion on, on what you guys believe art is. Especially because, you know, all this stuff is engineered and there's a certain level of, of uh, confusion that I find with people when they see my stuff because it's engineered and it's like, quote unquote, machines. So yeah, what do you, what do you guys think? What is art to you? Does this count as art? Okay, we are done that. Beautiful. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna take apart this guy. Right here. Make this smaller. Beautiful. So the reason I needed a new string thing was because I changed the dimensions of these right here. So yeah, it's the strings on this aren't going to be long enough. So we're going to have to re seed them, but it's not a big deal. We can make it happen pretty quickly. I unfortunately cannot read. I, is that Thai writing or is it uh, is it Sanskrit? Art is everything, hey. Art is everything and art is nothing, right? So just disassembling this is, I knew this was gonna be a challenge, but hopefully we don't break anything. Come on. I knew this was gonna be a problem. It went in way too tight, but we should be able to wiggle it out. Yeah, it's coming, there it is, okay. Yikes. All right, we're just gonna cut all the cords here. It's kind of sad, a lot of work. Okay, 
So there's the OG base right there. All of this is transferring onto this base. Just made some improvements. So yeah, the prototyping. Amazing. Yeah, I, I still don't know what a fipple is. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to show me what this fipple is. And I'm happy that I was able to inspire. So I'm just throwing these uh, rubber feet on the bottom of this base. It's gonna help me do the rest of the work so it's not sliding all over the place. Also gives it a really nice effect. <laughs> it's dark humor. Rubber feet for the win. Uh, okay, um, this is a mess, but we're cutting the cords. No, we're not. We're not cutting the cords. We're just gonna pull them out. True, true. Is it like a fully 3D printed instrument or is it just a mouth, mouthpiece? I could say something like deep right now, like you must first disassemble before you must reassemble. Real deep, Jay. There we go. Okay, so this we don't need anymore. From these parts right here, I need these links and the C-clamp, so let's grab those real quick. Retaining rings. Ah, I see. How do you tune it? Just by like setting the holes in the right positions? That's actually a fun idea. I never really even thought that you could just 3D print like a recorder or whatever. It's always fun. We're just salvaging some parts right now. Then we can get in the fun stuff. What do you guys think of the tunes? You feeling these, these vibes? Cool, cool, that's awesome. Fingers crossed for you. Start building. Oh, we need these parts a little bit as well. Some of these parts. We need this gear. And we need this gear. 
Oh, shit. Um, this, oh, okay, cool. This was like on super tight yesterday and I couldn't get it off. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, if I put them any louder, it's gonna be a little too hard for me to like concentrate and like, I don't think you'll be able to hear me. So it's just a vibe for me then right now. All right, so there we go. Look at how nice to that spinning. Just PLA on PLA. There's a little bit of WD-40 on this gear right here, which is why it spins so well, but yeah, I, look at that. That's awesome. Okay, this gear goes here. Doesn't spin that well in this direction, but luckily we're spinning this gear to spin that gear. That's pretty good. Hey, Miss B, Mrs. B, sorry. Well, that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about improving on, on others' designs. So we got that. Yes, I did. Okay, so we got our bevel gear. This is the big, one of the big changes right here is I realized that I don't need this outer ring gear. So we went straight with the bevel gear. That brought this in closer to the base. You can see this is a little bit further out because I had the space there. There you go. So I had the space here for this gear. And so yeah, I don't need that anymore. So this got a little bit smaller. Doesn't make a huge difference from like a manufacturing or a 3D printing standpoint, but another, Another big improvement, and this is actually a huge improvement, is I actually made this hole the right size finally. So that goes in there nicely. Okay, so we need this knob from this crank. We can get that pretty easily. Just gotta pop this C-clamp out, grab the knob. Here's another improvement. This is actually gonna fit in that hole. Amazing. Yesterday we had to drill it out and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I think we're gonna go with Sarah then. Miss, Mrs. Sarah B. Nice to officially meet you, Mrs. Sarah B. All right, so that goes there. It's a little crunchy. Oh no, that's beautiful. Look at that, nice and easy. For some reason, there's one position here that always gets a little bit crunchy. I don't know what it is. I might just need a little bit more clearance in these double gears. Although for some reason, for some reason it only happens sometimes and not other times. Thank you, Abinab. If I'm pronouncing your name wrong, try to like help me out and tell me how to pronounce it. Yeah, you know what, for now, got a little bit of crunch. A little bit of crunch is fine. I think it's always in the same position too, which is weird. I have no idea what's causing that crunch. I, I'm gonna stick with anti. <laughs> yeah. Anti V. I, I don't know if you guys have seen that um that show by the boys. Oh, there you go. Nice. I think they, they use like this um, like substance in the show called Super V. That's kind of what you remind me of, but like you're the opposite. You're the anti-V. All right, dope. Working good enough. We can move on. So, 
Next thing we got to do is throw these stanchions. You know, actually, we're going to go we're going to go with this approach again because it worked well yesterday. We'll throw this on and then we'll do the stanchions. Is that a good word for these stanchions? Yeah, compound V. Exactly. You got it. Anti V is the the anti compound V. Boom. Let me zoom you guys out a little bit. There you go. It's the anti compound V. Anti V takes away the superpowers. Oh no, it's a 10 year old name. That's like, like our email addresses when we were like kids when they first came out. When emails, everyone's got their first email and it's just like, I don't know, I'm, I'm Canadian so everyone's email is like hockey freak underscore slap shot underscore like 15833. Luckily that is not my email anymore. So yesterday, Sarah was throwing down some serious ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, also known as Mrs. B, also known as Mrs. B underscore super chit chat underscore, I don't know, I'm making stuff up right now. But yeah, Sarah was throwing out some serious, serious ideas yesterday and I love that, I love the inspiration. One thing that she threw out was the idea of doing some sort of mechanical clock. And here's like a little uh, like a little secret I'm gonna let you guys in on, is that was actually the plan for my next project is a, we're gonna do quote unquote mechanical clock, because it's gonna be mechanical in some sense, but that's all I'm gonna tell you. I think you guys gotta stick around and find out, find out why. Definitely, uh, yeah, the underscore 69, that was a classic, a classic one back in grade school. But yeah, so the next project we're going to be working on is a mechanical clock of some sort. I'm going to uh, further, hopefully, pique your curiosity and tell you that it is going to have a Arduino and it's going to be using some servo motors. If you don't know what those are, it's going to become very apparent in upcoming videos because we're going to go through the whole process. It's going to be a mechatronic clock and it's going to be sweet. I'm really, really excited for it. I'm thinking that I may make it a Kickstarter project once I have the design finalized and uh, make it possible for people to buy it. So it's going to be quite a I just forgot the word. It's just gonna be a big project. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be quite a big project. We're gonna go with that for now. I'm sure the word's gonna to come to me when it's not relevant anymore. So let's just get this finished and then we can, um, we can chat more about it if you guys want. kind of a, a pain to do, but I couldn't come up with any better way to do this, so. Thanks guys, that means a lot. I, I'm really excited for it, so. This project here, it's funny, uh, like, this project is the kind of project, there we go, that uh, it was supposed to be like a two day project, and then obviously they, I, they always get, I always get carried away. Let's just run the cables through the tops and then we can, uh, 
You know what? Let's, let's do that after. Let's put together. So here's the big change I made last night. These right here are the new pieces. These are these, these double pieces that you can see in the CAD drawings. These right here. And they basically printed in this orientation. Oops. They printed in this orientation. So there's no overhangs. There's like this a slight overhang right here, but most printers can handle that no problem. These angles are 45 degrees. So when you print it in this direction, you actually get a very clean, nice looking print. I made the holes a little bit bigger as well. And yeah, so there should be a little bit more room for these to float around and should be able to dangle more nicely. More nicely, I don't know if that's good grammar, but. Yeah, if you're doing a spring powered clock, that's gonna be a challenge, but it's doable. Another option is you could do like a gravity powered, if you have an escapement, if you're, if you're struggling with the spring, the spring power. I'm gonna try to push back my, too many keyboards going on here. I'll put there, this one push back so you have a little bit more room, That's beautiful. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what you come up with for your clock. Just gotta get all our parts out here, you know, first and foremost. Okay, let's do it. So this is the same exact method. I don't really need to clean them up as much because I have a lot more space to play with here, but now we're doing doubles. So we got that. Make sure that we got the right orientation. Looks like we do. And I really, really love four bar link mechanisms and I'll show you why. Look at this. I love the way that looks. Yeah, NTV, what's your channel? Or what's your, what are your socials? That's a great question, Mrs. B. Mrs. Sarah B. What? But if you made it and you didn't post it on the internet, did you even make it? Oh, look at that. I'm so excited. Yeah, it does, exactly. It's very Delta printer-esque. Oh, I'm so excited for this. And there's something in these four bar linkages all completely on its own right there. Sometimes you gotta clear out some of this, uh, this garbage right here. There's like, I don't know why, but there's just no setting in my slicer. Maybe there is in other slicers, but not in mine. That when you have an overhang like this, like ideally you want the prints to go like back and forth like this. And I don't know, but there's no setting for that. I don't know what Schrodinger's, what is Schrodinger's clock? Let's look it up. Let's look it up so all the folks out there know what we're talking about. Schrodinger's clock. What is it? I'm guessing these are not great. I don't, 
I don't really, I don't know. What, what are we? You got to explain more. You have to uh, ex like what it what does sus mean, guys? Okay, keep going, keep going. I'm intrigued. I thought I printed a ton of C clamps and it looks like I didn't. Maybe I did. Okay. A life-sized AI robot. Now you're asking too much. Let's see, this is what Schrodinger's cat is. Text radioactivity, i.e. a single atom decaying, the flask is shattered. Uh, this is a... Ah, uh, got it. Thank you for that. For filling me in. This is this is too philosophical for me right now. You're gonna have to explain more. Apparently I can't figure this out on my own. Link down. I will have to look that up as well. Yeah, it's like if a tree falls in the forest, does it even make a sound? Okay, looks like we need to dismantle this for the C-clamps. I feel like this is like stoner, this is like stoner talk. Like is the cat alive and dead at the same time, bruh? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. Uh-oh, might just have enough. Yeah, it definitely went over my head as well. As AntiV just mentioned, Sus means suspicious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah. Okay, and this link we need. Yeah.
Okay, so I'm taking predictions. What do you guys think the uh, success rate is going to be here? What are the chances of this working the way that we want it to? I'm going to put my success estimation up at like 75% right now. Yo, Mr. Chaos, what's up, buddy? Thanks for tuning in today. All right. Oh, dude. That's sick. Okay, this one I actually I put in the wrong way, so bear with me. we need these gaps up because we have new and improved wedges. 85%. I love the confidence. Abhinav, where, what part of the world are you in? All right, beautiful, okay. So we have ourselves, our articulating wave. That's pretty dope. Let me give you like a different view so you can see it. That four bar linkage action is so sick. So one thing I really love doing with my pieces, with my artwork, is I love having like tons of different mechanisms in it. Like, I'll give you an example of like a situation where I just went completely overboard. Where is it? This guy right here. Let's see if I can do it. So this is one of those situations where I just went completely overboard. I have this like gear, bevel gear to this system, to this like a reciprocating thing to this gear, to this, to this. It's just, just really overboard when it comes to like what's necessary to get this motion, which was the output motion. But I just love having as many different mechanical mechanisms in these things as I possibly can have. And so I'm really pumped to have this four bar linkage here because it's just another like, really cool mechanism. This is actually sick too when you like, look at how this moves. There's something here all on its own completely. Nepal, awesome man, I'd love to go to Nepal. That's a place that's definitely on my list. Okay, but yeah, let's get moving. Let's, let's stick to the, uh, let's, let's stay focused here for a little bit longer and then we can have some fun out there. Okay, so. What we're gonna do, I think we're gonna string these first and then we can put that on. So you guys know the process here. It's so satisfying. And like, we just don't, we don't get a lot of opportunities to just like play with mechanical mechanisms. So that's kind of why I like being an artist, like an engineering art, I'm doing quotes, but I am, I do consider myself to be an artist but it's because I can put that many mechanisms in and when someone's like, but why? I can just be like, well, cause it's art. And you can just like, you can just go ham.
All right. Maybe one time on live, I will show you all of the projects. It does, it does take a lot to raise the roof. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. I, well, I appreciate it, Mr. Chaos. Yeah, definitely. Um, Anti-V, my favorite project that I've, I've done to date is definitely the encouragement machine. So I'm like so happy you said that, and Miss B. Mrs. Mrs. Sarah. That's a dope idea, actually. The encouragement machine, though, it um it didn't it didn't really make it. It didn't last very long. So I have to redesign it, but it's so hard for me to go back to a project once I'm done. I just love moving forward onto the next project. So but maybe, maybe one day I'll do some integrations between some of my old projects and we can do the link ups. But that's a great idea. Okay, so I just need to figure out, oh, it's right here, sweet. So let's, uh, I'm gonna bring you guys like right here and we can, there we go. Um, Steven, that is insane, man. That's like something that you, I could see you doing for sure, a thousand string Mac, but yes, I will consider it one day because I do like to punish myself. All right, so remember this process. I almost forgot, actually. Got to set this to the longest length. Wow, this moves so much better than the last one. It's amazing. So that just goes like that. And that. Comes in there, presses in, amazing. So the weight is way better. Yeah, one day, Steven, we're gonna, we'll, maybe we can collaborate on that one. I'll design it, you build it. How's that sound? Was it a was it a Ruben Margolin machine that you saw? The inspo for this design. Wow, new wedges for the win. These new wedges. Okay, these are the old wedges here. Here are the new wedges. I literally just made them longer and added a deeper groove. So it's easier for me to like hold and like put the string in. And they're serving their purpose. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Classic, classic J. I forgot to set this to its longest length first. But we're not gonna do that twice, I promise you. We're not, we're not redoing anything again on this project. I can imagine, man, that's a lot of strings. Without any reason, come on YouTube, at least give some reasons for your recommendations. Well, Dawood, what we do here is uh, mechanical art and well, mechatronic as well. Although right now we're working on this mechanical art piece. And we also just have a great time and chat and come up with crazy ideas and have a good time. Dope, yeah. Ruben Margolin is a legend. He's the reason why I'm doing this project. Like this is like honestly like a copy of his of his concept. Like all of his work is basically just string string stuff.
So one idea for the dingleberries is I would love to um, turn that into like a straight sine wave. And maybe we'll even do that today. Maybe we can like throw that together. When this is done, we'll just go hard, design something really dope. Of course, man. Of course I read your comment. I wouldn't, I, I would be nothing without your comments, guys. I'd just be like talking to myself, that's no fun. Yo, everyone say what up to Dawood. Am I saying your name right? Dawood, Daywood? Oh my God. We are on the struggle bus here. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Flattered me. Why is this not pressing on like it was yesterday? I was trying to figure out a way to get this to hold the wedge, but it, I just couldn't figure it out. Got over it. Really, there's gotta be a better system here for this, but I can't think of anything. So this is what we're going with right now. I should just like, I do it like that maybe. That's maybe the way to do it. Ah, okay. Dowd. Dowd. You have a nice day as well. Yo, Jacker, what's up, dude? There we go. Yeah, that looks like a wave. It's coming along. Yeah, let's check it out together. Let me know, because I actually I have uh, Mr. Margolin's Instagram page open right now because his stuff is, we like look at his stuff every time. So what, what's it called? Let's see if I can find it in the chat. Nebula. Is it this? No. That's cool too though. Is it this? Nope, but that one's really, look at this, holy moly. Look at this one. Can you guys see it? Yeah, crazy. Okay, so this is my idea for the dingle barrier to do something kind of more along this, this way. Jack I'm doing great, dude. This one's dope too. So yesterday, this tool right here was like staying really nicely on the top of these pieces. Today it's not for some reason. I haven't seen Bob Potts, I'll have to look it up. Let me do this one first, then we'll look it up. I think I'm just gonna tape it on for sake of ease. That's not gonna work either. I think I'm just gonna have to make this more, like have more depth here maybe. That'll be the last thing we need to fix. So I'm definitely struggling to get these wedges in place. Maybe this is how I do it. I can do wedge, alignment tool, pull 
pull it up, hold it tight, jam it in. There we go. Struggling. Let's do this. Is this, this is the one? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's huge. Definitely a dream of mine is to do a, a project on that scale one day. Maybe move away from the desktop stuff. Do some cool installation style stuff. One day. That one I messed up, I think. Yeah. Where's my tweezers at? Yeah, pretty dope. Really, really beautiful sculpture. Really awesome stuff. So I'm really struggling here to get these pieces in place, but if you guys bear with me for a little bit longer, we're almost there. I just dropped a wedge inside here and I can't get it out. My fingers are not dexterous enough here. It's like... It's in there. You gotta just... You guys can see what I'm showing you. God damn it. Oh my God. <laughs> it must have taken a long time to get all the strings in the right length and everything. I can only imagine after doing these small versions here. Yeah, got it. Give me a run for my money right now. This sculpture. It's because of this guy though. This guy is just not working today the, the way it was. Dawood, thank you for checking in. Enjoy, have a good night. Sleep well. I hope you have some good dreams of engineering and medical and stuff. Okay, you got it right this time. Yeah, moving on. I 
I gotta say, this is one of those situations where I wish I wasn't designing this for print because I could just use screws or like hot glue and then that would solve this problem here completely. This like dangle train is just not working so well for me. There we go. No. Oh my God. Um, I know that there's some videos explain like that just show like Ruben Margolin as an artist. I'm not sure if there's a video explaining this specific piece. Maybe there is, let's see if we can find it. Uh, no. Hmm. I'm sure it has been done before. No, it doesn't say how those connections work. Maybe here, the weave? No, this is just the pattern. Oh my God. Oh my God, that is crazy. Yeah, that would be a different printer entirely to do metal printing. They're right now, they're not quite there yet. They're not quite like that good yet. And you know, it just, there's like a, a process involved in like post, post processing. Okay, don't, let's get this right. Yeah, no, this is so frustrating. I have an idea. We're gonna use this to hold this in place. So, put that on, like that. It's crazy, because this thing worked so well yesterday. But today, not as good. Nope, that's not gonna work either. So we go like this. What happened to you? I guess it, it sounds sketchy, but if you're just printing food with food, then it's maybe less sketchy. Okay, this is my new method is gonna be less effective, but we're gonna get this set. And hopefully it's not gonna move and we're just gonna push that in and yeah, that's way better. Yeah. All right, we figured it out. This is the way to proceed. And I think we can move a lot faster now, which is good. So next, set this in the right position.
All right. Two more, guys. This is so exciting. 3D printed steak. Yikes. And there's a lot of promise in 3D printed organs. Because the organ trade is a scary, scary thing. You guys have heard about that. And they talked about it in Squid Games, actually. That was like one of the themes in Squid Games, which is super, super freaky. I think that was probably the creepiest part of the whole, the whole show. All right, last one. Sweet. <laughs> Thought you were saying the organ trade is looking good. I'm like, ooh, yikes. What kind of printer are you using? Is it is it easy to switch filament halfway through a print or not really? So it does look like a wig. Before we do the final reveal here, let's cut some of these excess strings out. And I'm purposely leaving some slack here just in case we need to make some changes, but it looks pretty good. These are a good weight too. Anti-V, you gotta just, uh, yeah, it definitely leaves an ugly line for sure. But it's better than like having a fully failed print. Maybe. Depends on the, on the circumstances. What's up, Sai? Yeah, I'm um, really pumped with how this looks. All right, Let's zoom you guys out. Let's see how this looks. Imagine, that'd be terrible at this point. It'd be so hard to fix that. All right, you guys ready for this? Are you, re are you ready for this? Okay, let's do it. Yes. Wow, that is working so much better than I'm expecting. Chaos, you didn't miss much. It was just me fiddling the strings for a while and now it's working. I gotta figure out what this grind is right here. But that is working so well. There we go, exactly. Yeah, you came at the perfect time. This is the best part of any project right here. You guys are witnessing it with me. This is like, like, ah, oh, yes, I'm done. Look at, look at the way the strings move inside. You can kind of see it, yeah. Get my hand out of the way. How sick is that?
amazing. Okay, sweet. So this project is done. So if you guys are curious, I'll just show you quickly what, what happens next at this point. So one of the things that I need to do at this point is make a video that shows how to put this together. We're gonna do that probably later this afternoon when I'm done streaming. That means I have to take the whole thing apart and put it back together again. Really excited to do that. Not. But, oh shit, I just realized now I probably shouldn't have cut these strings so tight, but is what it is. All right, so, um, yeah, exactly. I got so much fishing line left and I don't fish, so. But there's gonna be more projects like this in the future. You know what, I even may start working on the Dingleberry project right now while I've got you guys, just so you can see how I start a project. But before we do that, here, let me pull this open a little bit more. So I've actually already gone and fixed, set up all these download files. So basically the way it works is when you download these files, you can just drop the build in and then hit print and you're good to go. And so there's four builds on this. You gotta print all the pieces here. That's build one. There's build two, although I gotta delete these pieces from it. Now that I see that, um, let's do this. Mesh, separate connected surfaces. I gotta delete all of these. Select all, group, arrange, and then I can save that. Nope. File, export, binary. That's build two. I'm realizing now build three is probably missing those wedges, but we'll, we'll see. This is the process of just checking my work here. Oh, that doesn't look right, because it's not. There's build three there. So if I uh, put that there, mesh, separate connected surfaces, delete this. It's actually important that I go through this and check my work guys, because otherwise I'd, I'd be sending this out and people would be really confused. And then this is build four, which I'm pumped about. I love the way that it's all set up. I get like this small joy out of like just lining things up really nicely. Look at that. It's the little things. All right, so back to the dingleberries. Let's close some files here. What is ASMR? Guys, you gotta fill me in. Okay, I'll check it out right now. Bob Potts. Let's pull up in this. Oh, these are awesome too. This is what you're talking about here. Stuff like this. Wow. Ah, oh, the exploding circle, yes. See, so this is cool, because he uses, he uses like nice materials. Got it, oddly satisfying videos. Look at this though, I'm, I'm pumped with it. Is, is there a video of this? Yeah.
Okay, cranked. Whoa. Definitely inspiring. I have some ideas already brewing. So something like this would be cool to like have like a 3D exploding, imploding circle like that. Uh, look at this mechanism here. It's the offset gear. That's genius. That is genius. Wow. Let's see what his exploding circle looks like. What is this guy? That's cool too. Wow. I love that it rocks from the motion. Also this chain, this chain system. That's a really awesome mechanism as well. I want to see his exploding circle. Is it here? What goes around comes around. So this is sick. I actually really want to, this is one of the reasons why I want to get CNC is so I can do like more just like intricate designs like this. This is like exactly like this model. Hold on, let me grab it. Hold on. If I have it still. So it's this exact same mechanism. Here, let me swap to this camera to show it to you. Yeah, the motor itself is part of the, yeah, it's really awesome. Really awesome stuff. Okay, so that goes there. Uh, there you go. So this is actually, uh, I designed this for a project I was doing with the guy, Steven from 3D Printer Academy. We worked, worked together on this project and I actually, Where's my switch? It goes this way. So you turn it on, and there's that same exact mechanism. So satisfying, eh? Actually, I haven't turned this on in a long time, so it's fun to see it. This is the first exploding circle mechanism that I made. I would love to do this with like, these panels could be wood, could be really, really nice with these panels as like wooden panels. Yeah, there's so much you can do. Love it, love it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's keep moving though. So I think in the next 40 minutes or so, what we can do is I'm gonna pull open uh, this right here and we'll go, with, we'll go with this one right here. So how do I do this? I wanna like, I, I do have an online store for the, the download files. I don't sell a lot of my stuff like in a printable form just because it's, um, it's hard for me to print it all. It takes a long time and like I wanna keep my printers like all ready to go. But yeah, I do have a download. I have a Patreon as well if you wanna just support like, I don't know, my work. But honestly, you guys just being here, chatting, having a great time that means more to me than anything else. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Okay, so sorry, let me explain where we're gonna go from here. So we're gonna make something like this using the, we're gonna basically take this gear mechanism and we're gonna make a quick modification and I'm gonna try to make something that I can mount onto the wall. 
Um, yeah, let's let's do it. And we're gonna hang these these dingleberries from that thing. So, um, I guess we're gonna call this like we're gonna actually we're gonna start a whole new project on this. So let's start like this. This is normally how I start my projects. And I'm gonna regret doing this, I know, because I was so ready to move on to the clock, but I think this is gonna be something we can do in a couple of days just because we already have all the pieces made. So let's do it. Uh, I really appreciate that, Sarah. Um, okay, so we go here, we're on project 058. We're gonna call this wall mounted sine wave. That's gonna be our working title, not wave woo. Sine wave. And let me get this open here. We're gonna open a window from before because we're just gonna reuse some of the parts here. Um, where did it go? Go back, back it up. Okay, so what we're gonna use is that big gear. It's a big spur gear. Which one is it, this one? And we're gonna change the name. Wall mounted sine wave. That's just in case I open this part and this part at the same time and change one, it won't change the other. So it just makes things a little bit easier. We're gonna grab the string mount. W, M, S, W. And I think that's good enough to start for now. Maybe we'll grab the base as well. Base, but I do want to grab the new base. That is this one here. And I guess we're going to need the bevel gear and the crank and all that. Um, I do have, I do have PayPal, but Are you talking about like the helicopter seeds? Like they're all over the place here actually right now because it is it is fall. Base, we need the uh, crank bevel, I guess. And you'll see why when I reuse all these parts, why it's so easy to make a, a sculptor so quickly. Um, crank bevel and then we need um, Hmm. Maybe we don't need this bevel actually. Uh, we do need the crank. Okay, let's just start here and we'll, we'll go from there. So we can close this. So basically, I'll just, I'll just lay out the parts and then, sorry, I'm getting real excited here, guys. But yeah, basically what, what it's gonna be is a wall mounted piece. Do new assembly. Let's just save it in the right spot first and foremost so I don't mess that up. And we're gonna save it as wall mounted sine wave assembly. Oh, this is opening. No, this one. Let's try that again. Wall mounted sine wave underscore assembly. That's actually a cool idea for like a fun, just like a random fun print. Okay, so let's insert this base. And we'll, we'll alter it after, I think. Uh, it's got some issues here that it's not happy about, but I don't, we don't need these anymore, I believe. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this. Uh, what else? We don't need this. Okay, that's good enough for now. I think um, my plan for this, you know what? I'm gonna show you on the board here. Let me get this going. And it's gonna be super easy to do this, which is always exciting when you can pump out a second project in like 45 minutes. Completely different, but the same, but different. 
Okay. So this is what it's gonna look like. This is this is what it looks like in my head right now, at least. I can't guarantee what it's gonna look like when it's all done, but it's gonna look something like this. Let's see. There's the top of where you can see. Okay. So we're gonna have this like big gear here with the strings coming out of it. And then this is the base right here. And I'm gonna have like something like this. And then maybe all the strings are gonna come through like something in the center here. And they're gonna come down like this. Is this gonna work? No, it's not gonna work. The strings have to come out and around. So we're gonna have like the dingleberries, like. You guys can see what I'm doing. That's a sick idea too. I really like the idea of that. Having it like map to something. But just for the sake of reusing what we've already got, we're going to take this, it's going to have this string system. Maybe there's going to be like some like tracks for the strings coming around. That could be cool. And then the strings are basically going to come out through the base, through here into there. And as it rotates, this is gonna be a wave moving up and down, kind of like that. And yeah, we're gonna basically finish this in the next hour, hopefully. That's as long as my theory works, we'll see. Okay, so back to here. So let's insert, this is, um, Speed CAD, it's one of my favorite things to do. Because remember what I said yesterday, I have zero patience, even though it seems like I do, but I don't. Look, I've just finished a project and I really do, already want to finish a second project. Boom. Then we need this, insert component, this string mount, open, boom. So we're gonna go with 15. We might even go with, yeah, we'll go with 15 just because we got them. 15 is a fun number, boom. Let's get the music back on, how does that sound? I know, I know, it's such a funny name for them. If you guys know what dingleberries are, um, I'm not gonna say on stream what they are. I'm gonna let you guys look it up yourselves. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't, it doesn't have a different meaning than what you're thinking. An ATV, a hundred percent, man. This is actually not going to be done in an hour, but sometimes I need to believe that before I even start. Otherwise I wouldn't even start, but, oh shit. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to this sketch, goodbye to this sketch, goodbye to this. Goodbye to this thing. Okay. So now we're just moving quick here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna refine this later, but just to get the, the basic idea before we go anywhere, I'm just gonna we're just gonna grind it out quickly. And then we'll, we'll make it look nice second. Grind first, nice second. We'll make this maybe like six millimeters and we can attach it to here for now. And we're gonna go with a width of, I'm not exactly sure yet here. I guess I can, I guess I can do it. Yeah, we'll figure that out after.
from there to there. So in case you're wondering, this is like a nut, like one of those reasons why CAD is so awesome. So, okay, so the reason why I'm making it 200 or like 205, I want this to print on the bed of a printer and I want it to be able to print on most people's printers as per usual. So that's why we're not gonna make it wider than 200, although I might, wa I want to, but we're not going to. Maybe we can go 205, let's max it out. Most people's printers have a bed of 205 or larger, but like not much larger than 220. So that's why we're going with this for now. And we're gonna make it look nicer later, so don't worry if we don't like the way it looks right now. Just gotta bear with me here. And I actually want to extend it out the other way as well. And maybe we'll go up like, I don't know, 10 sounds good for now. And then we're gonna make some Circles on here and there's 15, which means if we have a circle in the center. Yeah, I, I designed for uh, everything over the Prusa Mini. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you have a Prusa Mini, you might not be able to, to print some of the stuff that I make, or you might have to like angle it on an angle or something. But yeah, I, I basically start at any cubic mega and go up from there. Yeah, guy just, uh, you know, to some extent you don't want it to be too small. So I think it looks better when it's a little bit bigger. So now we got that, we're gonna make some holes. Pattern the holes out along this line. And also on this line. And we need 15, so what is that, eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where? Who taught me how to do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, seven, and seven. What am I doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Perfect. Okay. And we'll make the spacing a little bigger. The uh, the material for the three D printers is like I uh, it's it's not expensive, but it's also not not expensive. It depends on how much you're printing. I, I agree, if they made the bed on the mini a little bit bigger, that'd be way better. What just happened? There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. But yeah, it honestly depends. So now we gotta get our dingleberries, AKA big balls in my file naming system. And we're gonna get V2. And I want to uh, just make a, a quick axis here so I can align them easily. Insert component, big balls, rev two. And this is going to be super easy to do. You just grab this axis, grab this hole, mate them. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then we can just copy with mates. can do this boom this is where like being like a, a CAD guy is like almost like playing like like online computer-based games because 
the faster you can click, the faster you can get shit to happen. Nope, see I messed that one up. Yeah. And it's become quickly apparent that the spacing is too small. So all these dingleberries are gonna be hitting each other. So we're gonna have to do less dingleberries it looks like. Hmm. The question is, what is it gonna look, is it gonna look, how is it gonna look without it? Well, thank you, Two Fly, for your mom. I'm a fan of you as well. <laughs> yeah, true. Luckily, my computer is fast enough to handle my speed, my CAD speed. Okay, so I guess. Um, you know what the answer to this is going to be? Make the dingleberries smaller. Yes, because I can do that. That's the best part. Let's make them more narrow here. Eight, uh, first, we're going to have to do this. No, yes. First, we'll make this smaller. Make it like eight. And then we can make this. Oh, you're talking to anti. Oh, you're talking to anti V. So this is actually one of those situations where I didn't constrain a sketch and now I'm paying for it. So follow my advice, constrain your sketches. But <laughs> we're not gonna do it again this time just cause whatever. Uh, what's the problem here? Doesn't have an edge, we'll use this edge right here. Boom. All right, smaller dingleberries, let's see if they fit. Almost, make them smaller. First, we need to make this smaller. Yeah, we can make them less narrow is really the main thing here and more narrow. The wedges that we used before were two millimeter that worked perfectly fine. Now we can make these a little bit more narrow and maybe I'll take some of these out. Honestly, I actually like always constrain my sketches, but I just did this for like a quick test and so I didn't. And then yeah, in SOLIDWORKS you always pay for it if you don't constrain your sketches. It's just such a classic thing. See, it just happened again. So constraining my sketches, see how this sketch kind of like loses its form? It's because it's not constrained. I can fix that problem by doing this. Now it probably won't happen again, but the other thing is that this isn't in the right spot. So I'm gonna make that just a straight line. And by constraining my sketches, see how everything's turning from blue lines to black lines, and that's what constraining the sketch means. I need to make sure that this is 45 degrees angle. I'm gonna give this a radius. Nope, that's too small. We're gonna go with that. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, I think, maybe like 2.5. And we're gonna give this a length as well. And now everything is constrained, it won't mess up again. And yeah, there we go. I don't know which chamfer it doesn't like here, but let's see. Uh, it's the inside of that. We'll figure that out later. For now, we'll just suppress it. Sweep our problems under the rug, come back to it. Okay, so the dingleberries are now like a sufficient size, although it's these fins that are getting in the way, so we're gonna make the fins smaller, and this is where constraining the sketch is gonna prove itself worth the effort. Yeah, probably, yeah, in Fusion, like if you don't constrain your sketch, is it just like, 
All right, yeah, let me know if you do. There, smaller fins, Let's see how it looks. Looks good enough. And now, perfect. Okay, so the next thing we need to figure out is how to get these to move in a waveform. I was just thinking about if all of these strings Yeah, it has to work the same way. So, we need to have a ring going around. I think I'm going to have... Hmm. Think about like how to actuate this. Do we want to crank it on the wall and watch things go up and down? I think we do. And I think I want to crank it from the side. It's 155, we have room. So maybe I'm gonna put a gear in right here and I'm gonna have a crank attached to that gear. And then I'm gonna have a ring going over this whole thing. And that's where the strings are gonna come through. So let's do that first. I guess we can, uh, okay, we can modify this right here. I don't know what size gear I want on the crank right now, but um, we might even have a gear chain just to, to move it out far enough. Let's edit the sketch. Amazing, that's the best when you just like, right at the end of the spool, you finish the print and you don't waste anything. So I'm gonna move this here and we're gonna give it an arbitrary length of that for now. And constrain it. Remember, constraints are important. Sarah, thanks so much for, for sticking around today. It's great to have you back and yeah. I just, just so you know, I don't think I'm going to be doing a stream tomorrow because I do have an appointment for a physio appointment. Um, but yeah, I'll be back on Monday and we'll be probably continuing this or working on that, this robot clock thing. Depends on how much I get done tomorrow on this. But yeah, have a great day, Sarah. Thanks again for stopping by. Okay, insert just for the sake of... Hmm. What size gear do we want here is the next question. Actually, if I go into my file system here, I have some gears that I lined up before. 45 teeth. That's probably good, actually. Let's throw it in and see how it looks. Insert component, browse, W, yeah, this one. We're gonna throw it on here and then we're gonna adjust the spacing after. Uh, we'll just adjust the spacing now. <laughs> so maybe we need to, um, So to figure out the spacing between two gears, this is a 100 tooth gear, this is a 45 tooth gear. They're module one, that means that their pitch diameters are 145 respectively. So you add those together and divide it by two. And it's gonna throw an error at me for sure. Oh, it didn't, perfect. So that's, and then like if you see, if I move this gear down to here, you can see the teeth line up actually perfectly. They're in a perfect position right now. So like there's no real exact way to figure this out, but when you look at it, if I'm 3D printing all this stuff, so I wanna have a little bit of space, which means there's gonna be some backlash in the gears, which means when, if the gear's in this position and I start rotating the gear this way up, it's gonna have a little bit of a moment before it engages and starts moving, but the fact is all this stuff is just 3D printed and um, yeah, so there's like, you gotta just kind of like deal with that when you're designing for this stuff, but it works, it gets the job done. So let's turn this hole big enough to hold that gear, boom, and we're gonna worry about this shape and everything, like the, the way this is set up later, but for now, that looks pretty good. And we can reduce, maybe we'll make this gear a little bit thicker. Maybe by a millimeter. Let's 
see if that's good. Still too small. So we're gonna add another millimeter to it. Beautiful. So I'm like thinking maybe I'm gonna have another gear here on this side just to like when you're like cranking it you don't want to be like your arm over the the affecting like affecting the way these things are moving but yeah so let's just i just want to adjust now let's see what this looks like this sketch here so it's not always like the cleanest way to do things like to like cut around what you've already done but because we're reusing parts here i'll, I'll take it right now I, I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist with this stuff, but whatever, you know, for the sake of moving quickly, sometimes you gotta put that to the side. Um, just is what it is, I guess. So I'm just thinking right now, how I'm gonna get this to work. So I need a ring coming out around here. I think right now these gears are sticking out. I might make this base thicker. Hmm. Yeah, because the, the ring has to be equivalent on all sides. Let's pull open some of Mr. Margolin's stuff. Yeah, so see how he's got all his strings coming here through a ring? That's to make the effect, like the way the strings pulling equal on all sides. So as it goes around, you get the same amount of like pull and release on each one of these. And then that gives you a consistent wave pattern. So let's build the ring. I'm trying to decide if I want to build the ring as a separate part or not. I think that I do. The only problem is right here. So I'm just thinking about how I would print this. Okay, I'm gonna make a ring first and then we can see if it will work. Sometimes it's just the best way to do things. So we'll go on this plane. Build the ring. I can't remember what the, we'll just make it this for now. We're gonna make it maybe three and a half millimeters thick. And we'll go, I don't know. We'll just do eight for now. And then we're gonna make some places where I can mount this to the base. So construction sketch there, 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 and then we're gonna make a circle that is 9.4, that's the magic number for outer rings. So the reason I just did, did it like this was so I can constrain this circle on the 45 degree angle. And my plan is to have four, and yeah, you, you'll see. So we need this line right here, and then we can make some boom, boom, delete that, make this, this, and this parallel. And then we can figure out how far we want this out from the circle. And I'm gonna go with, uh, yeah. You could, but you end up losing torque when you do it that way. And I, I tend to try to gain, gain torque from the crank. Like, how do I explain this best? Like, if I'm using a big gear to a small gear, I'll explain it on the, the drawing, actually. It's probably the best way to explain it. Let's just uh, finish this quickly and then I'll explain why I do things the way I do. So now we're gonna make 2.5 just so it's Strong and we need to, there we go. And we'll maybe make this three millimeters. Okay. WS, uh, WMSW string ring, love the name of that. Okay, so in this case, the input's gonna come from this side. So as I rotate this and I can actually show you, if I mate, this to this with the gear mate. I guess 
Can't really see what I'm doing on that end. There we go. That's better. So I'm just setting this up to the right ratio, 100 to 45. Boom. So as I rotate this gear, a whole 180 degrees, it's 45 to one, which, sorry, 45 to 100. So every rotation, I should, I should have just been able to do that math in my head, but I didn't. So every rotation of this gear is going to get, give us 0.045 rotations of this. Okay. So just to make sure that makes sense. So it should be almost a half rotation if I do a full rotation of this gear. So that's one full rotation gives us 0.45 rotations of this gear. So I'm losing speed on this gear. You know, so if I do a whole rotation on this, this only rotates half. So this is moving about half the speed, right? What I do, what I transmit though, is I, I gain half of the torque. So I need half as much torque on this input gear to get this gear to turn around. And what that means is this, this crank, the crank that's gonna be on this input gear requires half as much strength on it. And because these are 3D printed parts, I don't wanna have to like really, really crank on it to get the output. And I'm also trying to slow this down anyways. So in this case, having this type of gear ratio actually works in my favor. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that better. So ask me questions to try to like get a more clear answer for what you're looking for. Um, I'm trying my, I wanna, I wanna try to get you to understand this as good as possible, what I'm trying to do at least. I, I know you understand gears, but I just trying to explain to you what my thought process is. So I'm actually going to just to, move this out even more. I'm just thinking about like, does it matter where the strings are relative to the circle or does it matter? It, I don't think it does. I know I'm not really explaining myself that well right now, but it'll make sense after. What I'm thinking is, is it the distance from the ring to here that matters or is it the distance from this to the ring, which we gotta put the ring in place first. Let's put the string ring in. Oh, I made it way too big. This is uh, 56, so it's 112 radius. So this we can make a lot smaller. Maybe make it 120. This is gonna align to, maybe we'll make it this shaft. And then we're gonna align this face to the base, face to base, and then we just need one more constraint to hold that in place. And that's gonna be, string ring this plane to the base plane, boom. Okay, perfect. So now we can just finish this string ring. We need to mirror this and then we need to mirror this and this on this plane boom cool okay so string rings obviously interfering with these gears right now but maybe we can just uh we can at least try to start by reducing the size of this gear but let's uh put the holes in here and just make sure that everything's right before we do more of that work so we're gonna go through from this plane here i'm gonna make a hole down the center of this. I think we're gonna go with three mil. Cut. Through all. Beautiful. And then we're gonna circular pattern that around this ring. And we need 15, perfect. So now when we look at this, okay, so I wanna make this ring a little smaller. That's fair, honestly, you can get away with, with trial and error. You can go pretty far actually with the trial and error approach. Uh, I'm gonna bring this just a little bit closer in actually. I wanna even bring this in more. Oh, it was 110, okay, 110. We're gonna go with 105 on that. That's good. Then we can make it smaller, which is good for printing. We're gonna make this one 
08. That works for me. Let's make this a little bit smaller first. We're gonna go back down to two and a half. Maybe that should give us the clearance we need. No. What is the, we need to figure out what it is from here to here. It's six millimeters. So these gears could be five millimeters. Right now the gears are six and a half. Let's take away one and a half then. Boom. Now we're clear. That's great. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make this smaller too. I need to be like 130, maybe. Could be even smaller than that. And that's too small. Oh, I forgot actually, I have this problem right here. Okay, so we're gonna go back to 135 and maybe we'll move this up out of the center. So to do that, we gotta go here, edit sketch. We're gonna move this up here. Give it a distance to constrain it. Boom. See how that looks. This, I need to constrain to the center of this circle. Like that. And apparently this one too. So this is actually my bad. Um, in the first design, I was constrained to this origin when I should have been constrained in the circle, just in case you decide to move things around, but look, everything else works, so that's good. So now we have this ring, and actually I went too, too high with that. And also I have this problem here, so I gotta fix that as well. This is, this is called our single hour designs turning into like more than single hour designs, but yeah, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, true. So I, I think um, like the faster output, I just, yeah, th there's a certain give and take when it comes to gears, when I'm doing all this 3D printed stuff, because obviously there's a certain limit to like how much force these 3D printed parts can handle. Okay, so that looks good to me. The other thing I'm gonna change is this right here. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. It is definitely the way the sculpture hopefully doesn't crumble. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go with cookies for now. Yeah, like that's one of the biggest things like with engineering in general is you have to really keep in mind like the constraints that you're dealing with, right? So, you know, like there, there's theor theoretical limits to everything, but then there's actual limits to everything and like actual practice. And so in this case, that's, you know, it, it actually is helpful to have like constraints to your designs because like ultimately if you don't have constraints to your design, you're going to end up like you, you end up with the freedom to do anything you want and then you can kind of get stuck in that freedom. So that's why I actually really like having the constraints. Like for me, it's 3D printing is my, my main manufacturing method. So that's where I constrain my thought process towards. But if it's something else, if I have like a, a CNC, for example, then that would change the way I design and change the things that I like think about while, while designing. Okay, so thinking about this now, let's just see if this is theoretically gonna work. So as this rotate, let me constrain this actually first. 
this plane we're going to constrain to this. And we're going to make it parallel, not coincident, because I want it to be able to move still. But yeah, boom. So as that rotates, it's going to pull on the strings. The strings are going to route through here. That one's going to go to here. That one's going to go to here. That one's going to go to here. And we're going to use probably the same method of like aligning the dingleberries. And so I guess the last thing we need to figure out is how to get the strings to route. So maybe we'll go top across to here. And we can make this, get this out of the way first and foremost. This is gonna be 5.2, I believe. Yeah. And then I'm gonna have another gear on this side probably. That's another way to do it, exactly. Uh, um, everyone's got their methods, right? And like you also, like you don't wanna ruin your, um, you don't wanna ruin your, your creative process with your constraints either. For me, I can, I can kind of keep both in mind at the same time. It's funny actually, a lot of people have been saying that I look like Howard from the Big Bang Theory. Yep, doing great after the show. You know, I became an artist, mechanical artist. So I'm gonna bring this back down to zero because I like how it looks like that. So yeah, last thing to figure out is from a mechanical standpoint is how to route the strings. And I think I might just make some like pins that you can route the, that I'll just print and the strings will route on those pins. And maybe I'm gonna redesign this now. I wanted to, um, I'm gonna do this not the best way, but I'm gonna do it in a way. So I got that there. We're gonna extrude that up to this surface, boom. Now we're going to mirror that, boom. We have this problem here, so I need this cut to be under there. No, it's not letting me do that. Can I move this down? No, but I can move this down. I need to move all of these together. Hey, never mind. We're just going to have to do this the old school way. Boom. So now we can go back to here. Make a circle on this. That is co-radial with this. And then we can cut that out. Oh, gotta make sure I get rid of this too. Right, sketch. A lot of people also think I look like Jerry Seinfeld. That one I can actually see. So I'll take it. He's a funny guy. Boom. Good enough for now. We're gonna have to worry about this later. I'm just trying to get the idea, trying to get the um, the design down here. So let's see if I, uh... yeah, that's exactly what this is. This is basically the, the same thing as the timeline infusion. Works the same way. I actually think this is a little bit better than the way the timeline infusion works, but it's, it's the same exact concept. Oh my God. What I want to do is maybe design this so it's perfectly round. 
Yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. I'm doing this in the worst possible way, but maybe I can change it actually. I know how to change this. I know how to make this better. So we're gonna do it like this. If we go back to here, to our starting point and we edit this, this is gonna break everything and then we'll fix it. Everything's gonna break. It's gonna be super unhappy. But we're starting with a circle now. So let's delete all of this. We're gonna make this circle 140 millimeters. And boom, look at how unhappy everything. Actually, surprisingly not that unhappy, just, just here. So let's see, it's this guy right here because it's lacking, it's missing this constraint here. But what I'm gonna do now is instead of having this collinear constraint, I'm just going to give this a distance from here to here, boom. And then there we go. And then everything else should be working as long as we can get everything constrained properly. So what I want to constrain that to is this surface coincident, boom. That fixes that problem. Yeah, honestly, what is SolidWorks if you don't break everything every time you make a move? Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's see what the, oh, get rid of this too. Get rid of this. And this looks all right. Let's just make this a little bit wider. 140, we're gonna make it uh, 150. And hopefully it's still gonna work. Now we just gotta like bring this, I'm gonna bring it out like this. We'll go from this side and we'll do maybe like that makes, sh make those two lines tangent, boom. And then we can mirror that. No, you're the one's the wrong line for some reason. There we go. We need this to go across like this. And then we need to give it some constraints, classic. Maybe we'll make that 20. We'll make that 35, sounds good, boom. Now we can extrude it out to here. We actually don't even need to extrude it all the way looking at it now. So we're just gonna go blind and we'll have like a nice like gap down there. Why not? Save some material when you're printing. Looks kind of cool. So now I'm just wondering how am I gonna route the strings? And this is this is purely a design thing. We'll worry about this after. But how are we gonna route the strings? Cause we're gonna have to come up through here to these holes somehow. One, I actually want to flip this around too. So that's what I'm going to do first. Three, flip alignment, boom. And that way this hole is lined up with this hole, which is just way nicer. Now I'm going to do, I take all of these dingleberries and I'm going to put them into a folder Call it dingleberries, because that's what they're called now. And we're gonna hide them. Bye-bye. Okay. So right now the plan is to, to print this base up like this. So this is gonna be on the bed. We're gonna print it straight up. There's gonna be some way to hang this on the wall. I'm not quite sure what that's gonna be yet. Um, actually, I think I do know what that's gonna be. Let's just do that. Why not? So if we grab this plane, sketch. And we're going to do something like this.
This is 45. Yeah, it's because I ended up using 15 over 16 just because I had the dingleberries. But I actually think, thinking about it now. Nah, we'll just leave it how it is. 15 is good enough. The more you have, the more strings you have to mess with, and that's a pain in the butt. So, this is gonna be, I don't know, it doesn't really matter right now. Just wanna make sure that it's not sticking out through here, which it isn't. We're just gonna choose some arbitrary dimensions right now, and we'll clean it up later if we have to. Oh. Why is, why is it doing that? Just give it a dimension this way. Maybe less, 55. Yeah. And we're gonna cut that in both directions, mid plane, and we're gonna cut it like 30, 40, 50. That looks pretty good. And actually, I'm gonna change that sketch a little bit. So this needs to be bigger. I don't know what death whistles are. What's the deal here? It's this. Oh, it's because of this constraint. Oops. We need this to be constrained. and then we can make this longer. And we're gonna make this a little smaller. What's up, Mr. Gaming Channel? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. We're just uh, working on a little sculpture idea here. That was born of the, if you saw the, uh, the sculpture in a French cleat. Is that, I don't know what a French cleat is either. Maybe that's what this is. Make it a little smaller. That's still too big. Oh my God. I have an idea. If I take this and make this angled as well, and I solve our problem. Yeah, so basically the thing that you connect to the wall is gonna go into here and it's gonna sit down on that and hopefully it doesn't wiggle around too much. That's the plan at least. So the only thing is this is all gonna print as an overhang, but it shouldn't matter because it's on it's against the wall. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Freaky wind chimes. Okay, that's good enough for now. Let's see how thin that is. Oh yeah, that's perfect. This isn't gonna work, but it's good enough for now. We'll, we'll clean it up later. So one thing I have to figure out is how we're gonna actuate it. And I'm trying to decide if maybe I just wanna do, so I can't really print past here. I can add, I don't know. I don't know. We're getting to that point where it's, I'm starting to go a little bit brain dead, but that's all right, you know what? Yeah, that's what we gotta do. We gotta come back to this. So I think we're gonna call the stream here. Okay, yeah, exactly, it's a French cleat. That's exactly what I was making here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna call the stream here because I'm brain dead. And we basically just built a whole new sculpture in like under an hour, which is great. Um, yeah, which is awesome, really excited about that. Hopefully we're gonna be able to clean this up and maybe get it on the printer tonight. Otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in to, this was the original, here, I'll show you guys what the original point of this stream was, was to finish this piece right here. And we did that and it looks great. And this is gonna be up on my website and on all places you can download 3D printable files. Hopefully today or tomorrow, so you guys could download this and print it yourself. 
been great progress. Thank you for sticking around, Steven. I really appreciate it. So tomorrow I won't have a stream, but if you guys tune on Monday, I'm gonna be back and we're gonna be working on something. Maybe it will be this sculpture here. Maybe it will be something completely new. I'm not sure, but yeah. So I hope you guys all have a